Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We continue our discussion on heat transfer in continuous casting. In that sequence, the first is heat transfer in the mold, as I have shown in this particular figure. The molten steel enters from condition into mold, that is from here the molten steel is entering. This one is the water cooled, water cooled oscillating mold. Now, as the steel enters into the mold, a solid layer forms. As such, I have shown here, this is the solidified shell. As a result of heat transfer from liquid to the mold, a solidified shell forms. In the center, there is a liquid steel. As a result of solidification and because of the shrinkage during solidification and expansion of the mold, an air gap forms. This is the air gap. Now, this air gap may be continuous along the length of the strand or may be discontinuous. It depends upon the oscillating characteristics of the mold and the expansion characteristics. So, given this particular figure, the heat transfer steps in the mold, it consists of that is heat transfer, heat transfer from liquid steel, from liquid steel to solid shell and that is comprises of convection. What I mean is here the convective currents are here in the liquid. So, on account of that heat will transfer to the solidifying shell. Then within the solidified shell and this heat transfer occurs by conduction. Now, as I have shown that there is a formation of air gap between the mold and the solidified shell as such. Heat transfer in the air gap Now, for all purposes, the heat transfer in the mold is very, very important. Now, why it is very important? Because here, a solidified shell or a partially solidified shell has to form. The shell must have sufficient strength, so that it can sustain the liquid ferrostatic pressure, because as the, as the partially solidified strain is moving from the exit of the mold, the solidified shell should be able to sustain the ferrostatic pressure of the liquid which the shell contains. So, it is therefore, 
the solidification in the mold is a very very important in fact the formation of solidified shell is a prerequisite for the successful casting of billet bloom or slab if we are able to extract heat at a faster rate then we can also increase the casting speed that is casting speed strength of the partially solidified shell they are all interrelated and they are interrelated with the how fast or how slow heat transfer is occurring in the mold now say higher heat flux higher heat flux it depends upon the steel composition say what is the composition of steel whether it is a peritectic or eutectic depending on that then it also depend upon type of mold it also depend upon type of mold that is whether we have a straight type of mold and as i said to you in the last lecture whether we have a curved type of mold accordingly heat flux will be affected then it also depends upon what is the mold taper a very small mold taper is given could be of the order of 1% between the top and bottom of the mold for easy withdrawal of the strain so mold taper is also important then type of lubrication type of type of lubrication in fact the lubrication between the solidified shell and the mold it makes the easy withdrawal of the strand because it reduces the friction and another factor that affects the heat flux is the casting speed you can understand yourself higher is the casting speed what will happen and lower is the casting speed what will happen again they are all related with the heat transfer rate so heat transfer rate and casting speed they are interdependent now something about mold flux you see at the top of the liquid is still in the mold this is a sort of a mold flux the small flux the objective of putting mold flux is that it melts and it drains down within the space solidified shell and the mold so this mold flux has a very important role to play in continuous casting let us see the function of mold flux first it helps in inclusion absorption because no sooner mold flux is added on the top of the liquid steel it melts and due to stirring or due to floating of the inclusion it can be very well absorbed by the flux which is molten and which is kept on the top of the liquid steel it also prevents oxidation how it prevents because all the time the top of the liquid steel in the mold is covered by a slag so therefore the contact between atmosphere and the liquid steel is eliminated then it also prevents heat loss it also prevents heat loss because of the uh, slag 
which is very low thermal conductivity. So, it does not allow much heat to be transferred into the surrounding. Then, now this flux, it melts, forms a liquid and the most important function that this liquid does, it is that it enters into the air gap and therefore, the air gap formation is I do not say eliminated, but it is very, very minimized, because now the air gap which is created because of the differential expansion of solidified shell and the mold is filled by the lubricant. So, the chances of air gap formation is minimized. So, the, that means the mold flux plays a very, very important role. In fact, for your information, I may tell you that the provision of having mold flux, it helps during the continuous casting, because at that continuous casting stage, some amount of inclusion can be made uh, to float during continuous casting, because as long as liquid steel is available, as long as the agitation in the bath is there the flotation of inclusion is possible. In the mold, the central core is liquid, the agitation is provided by the condition stream which is submerged into the mold. So, the possibility of inclusion flotation is there in the mold. Now, what are the properties are required for mold flux? The properties which are required it should have low viscosity. So, that it can flow like that. Then, it should have low liquidous temperature, low liquidous temperature. Why should it have low liquidous temperature? Because then uh, it has to be molten at around 15, 1600 degrees Celsius, that is important. Then, the melting rate, melting rate of flux must match with withdrawal rate. withdrawal rate of strand. What does it mean? Flux is added all the time, it gets molten and as the partially solidified strain is drawn through the bottom of the mold, the liquid flux it enters into the air gap and to some extent it may be entrained along with the solid shell. So, continuous addition of flux is being done, so that the top of the liquid is always protected by the slag. So, that is why it must, the melting rate should be such, it should match with the withdrawal speed. Uh, now, the flux, it may consist of MgO, MnO, FeO, K2O and sometimes carbon powder is added, sometimes carbon powder is added into the flux. So, this is about the heat transfer in the mold. Now, heat transfer in secondary cooling, heat transfer in secondary cooling as the partially solidified strain is withdrawn from the mold. It is subjected to the intense cooling, which is provided by the water spray. It is the water pressure. It is the location of the nozzles, which are producing water spray. Distance between the two nozzles, because it is not one, there could be uh, several uh, nozzles, which are placed one after the other. So, the distance between the two nozzles, so all these affect, uh, affect the 
secondary cooling of the partially solidified strain which is withdrawn from the mold. So, all these parameters say pressure of water, distance between the two nozzles or distance between the two spray or the location of the uh, nozzles all are very important. So, that one is or one gets the complete solidification of the strain. So, the in the heat in the secondary cooling zone in fact, complete solidification occurs, complete solidification occurs in this particular range. Then also care is taken, so that outer sur surface temperature, so that outer surface temperature of the strain remains somewhat greater than 850 degree Celsius in order to avoid volumetric expansion caused by transformation from austenite to ferrite. If the temperature has dropped, then austenite to ferrite transformation may occur and that will result in the formation of cracks. So, the arrangement of water sprays produced by the nozzle is a very, very important step for having a better quality of the cast product. Because here, if you are looking for hot direct charging of the strain, which is billet, bloom or slab, then also the temperature at the exit of the continuous caster again plays a very important role. The heat transfer rate is decided by the heat transfer coefficient, then simply heat transfer coefficient is proportional to water flow rate, is proportional to water flow rate. So, accordingly higher is the water flow rate, higher will be the heat transfer coefficient, more heat will be transferred, but then one is to see that the heat is transferring from center to the outward. So, the chances of rapid cooling may also cause the thermal stresses in the strand and as a result of which the cracks may develop. So, these things have to be optimized. So, issues in secondary cooling, one issue is that non-uniform cooling. non uniform cooling non uniform cooling means width is very large for example of a slab thickness is relatively very low for example 2000 millimeter if the slab width around 150 or 200 millimeter is the is the thickness so placement of the water spray is important, so that you should have a uniform cooling and a uniform cooling will not result in thermal stresses, but a non-uniform cooling will result in thermal stresses on the surface and tendency for surface breaking is there. So, this is about the heat transfer in the secondary cooling zone. Uh, now, since you have seen The continuous casting is very fast. A 150 tons of steel can be transferred in 50 minutes in the form of slab, bloom or billet. The entire strain is in the state of motion. So, you pour the liquid steel into the mold, the mold oscillates. The moment a solidified shell forms in the mold, it is withdrawn. So, subjected by several forces. So, right from the top of the mold to the cutter of the continuous caster, the strain is continuously in motion. There could be frictional forces, there could be non uniform cooling, there could be lack of lubrication, several things could be there. So, it becomes very important to understand 
the pro the products and casting defects products and casting defects well the products are very clear it is slab bloom or billet the defects they can be classified the first is the internal defects internal defects now internal defects they consist of cracks because because of the continuous motion of the solidified strand and the liquid core is getting solidified during the motion that there is every chances of formation of cracks during solidification of molten steel to continuously cast slab billet or bloom internal defects the major will be in the form of cracks so now the cracks you can have midway cracks triple point cracks triple point cracks center line cracks diagonal cracks then straightening and bending cracks resulting due to straightening and bending because you have to bend it first you bend it then you straighten so all everywhere you 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 put a load on the solidifying strand then center segregation center segregation and porosity and porosity then casting flux inclusions casting flux inclusions because you put flux at the top of the mold when it becomes liquid or the inclusions may be drawn because of the motion of the liquid then we may have blow holes then cluster type of inclusions because the molten steel is poured from the lead from the tundish into the mold by submerged entry nozzles and the alumina inclusions they may clog on the walls of the submerged entry nozzle and they may fall as a as a clog so this may also appear in the uh, casting strain now say another is a surface defects they appear on the surface surface defects say for example longitudinal longitudinal mid face cracks corner cracks then transverse mid face and corner cracks then deep oscillation marks deep oscillation mark from where they are coming because the mold is oscillating at a certain frequency so sometimes if these oscillation marks are deep on the surface and if the strain is reheated for rolling operation that area will be oxidized so many times you have to scarf so that you can remove the deep oscillation marks next could be shape defects shape defects here ovality because of the several pressure surface static pressure rolling pressure straightening bending all it may not have the shape which you thought a billet or broom or slab or rhomboidity or we have longitudinal depression longi 
longitudinal depression. So, what is the origin of cracks? Origin of cracks. Now, before we go, I would like to show you the schematic diagram of a cross section which showing different types of crack. Now, one is the longitudinal crack, longitudinal corner, which is shown by the red mark. Second is a diagonal crack. Second is a diagonal crack. Third is the midway or straightening, straightening, bending to pinch rolls. Then fourth is a center line crack which is shown by the blue color. Then fifth is the transverse and sixth again the longitudinal, longitudinal and seven star cracks. So, these are the say different types of crack. I thought I will just show you where they are present and so that you can appreciate. Now, say let us see how the cracks are originated. So, origin of cracks, of course, anything has to crack, one should have stresses. Without stress, material will not crack. Now, as you understand or as you observe continuous casting everywhere the solidified strand is subjected to the stresses and in fact one is to manage the stress such that the cracks are minimized and you get a better quality strand. So, the origin of cracks the first is say you have the mechanical stresses, mechanical stresses. Now, these mechanical stresses that is due to motion that is very, 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 we are very clear. Now, we have to analyze our continuous casting wherever mechanical stresses are producing those point has to be taken care of. So, that the mechanically stressed induced cracks are not present. So, first they will be at the friction in the mold the friction in mold, because the solidified shell or partially solidified shell in the mold is constantly in touch of the mold. Mold is oscillating, strain is also moving. So, a friction can cause the crack. Then roll pressure. roll pressure, because for the withdrawal of the strain you have to put some roll and some pressure has to be put over there. Then ferrostatic pressure, ferrostatic pressure and for that purpose the strength of the solidified shell particularly in the mold should have sufficient strength. So, that the ferrostatic pressure which is exerted by the liquid that shell can sustain. Later on in the secondary cooling zone, the shell of sufficient thickness has developed. So, probably the effect of ferrostatic pressure may not be that high as compared to in the mold. Fourth crack can occur machine misalignment, machine miss alignment, because 
continuous casting is a resultant of arranging ladle, sun dish, mold, water spray that is a secondary cooling zone, cutter and so on. And anywhere if some sort of misalignment has occurred, it can result in the problem. Then bending and straightening operation. Bending and straightening operation. Now, you can imagine uh, you have to bend, apply the force, again you have to straight, you have to apply the force again. So, these are the certain which I thought could be the mechanical stresses. The more after observing the continuous casting machine, if you find you may edit so that you understand. Now, another stresses that can be induced thermal stresses. Now, thermal stresses will be induced because of non-uniform cooling of the strain. Once the strain is withdrawn from the mold, it is subjected to the intense cooling of the water spray. The location of the water spray, the distance between the water spray and after spraying the water, the water will roll out. So, there could be a difference in the water temperature at the time when it impinges and at the time when it leaves. If the distance between the two space is large, then after getting cooled by the first water spray, then the strain can be reheated before it enters into the second spray. So, these are all, though are the small, small things, but that all result in the so called non-uniform cooling. That is, this non-uniform cooling, non-uniform cooling as obtained by the location of the water spray, by the draining of the water on the top of the uh, strand, water pressure and so on and this non-uniform cooling will result in the stresses and hence the cracks also. Third could be material factor, could be material factors. What material factor means? If the material itself shows some transformation from liquid to solid and the expansion is associated, then it may result in cracking. For example, in iron carbon system, the delta to gamma transformation is one such thing. Second, high sulfur, high sulfur and low manganese sulfur ratio cause mid face longitudinal cracks, longitudinal Crack. So, one has to adjust these particular things. Now, here the surface cracks are more critical than internal cracks. You know, the internal cracks can be welded up during rolling operation, whereas surface cracks on heating the slab will the material under the surface crack or wherever the surface cracks are there, the material will be oxidized during heating. So, surface cracks are more critical than internal stress. Now, the mechanical stresses, now the mechanical stresses can be alleviated or can be reduced by improving mold practices. So, what are these say? Mold practices say mechanically, mechanically induced stresses can be partially eliminated by improved mold practice, and the improved mold practice consists of using casting powder. 
casting powder, then controlling powder rate, controlling powder feed rate, then more accurate strain guidance, more accurate strain guidance and this technique by having resonance mold. Whereas, the thermally induced cracks are can be minimized by having more uniform cooling. That means, by having the so called air water spray, that is by having the mist spray cooling and some of the continuous casters, they do uh, have the mist spray cooling in order to have the uniform cooling of the strain in the secondary cooling zone. Now, some of the reasons for say internal cracks, I will give you few, the rest you can see from the literature and make yourself of that. For example, we say internal cracks. internal cracks. Among the internal cracks, I will take few types, give you the factors that influence and then some remedies which we think it is possible. So, first I will consider for example, midway crack. Midway cracks. The cause of its formation is the spray reheating, spray reheating or below spray chamber, below spray chamber. What does it mean? It is the distance between the two spray is important, where the strain is moving out of contact of water. So, the strain gets reheated up because the heat from inside of the strain is coming out and when it does not find any water, then the top of the strain can be heated up. So, that is called the reheating of the strain. The factors that influence this particular thing is the high pouring temperature. high pouring temperature or when sulphur and phosphorus is greater than 0 0.02 percent. What is the remedy? Adjust spray system to minimize reheating or lower pouring temperature. If you see for example, straightening or bending crack, straightening or bending crack, this may be caused due to excessive deformation. Excessive deformation near solidification front due to straightening or bending. The influencing factor is the bending on liquid center, is the bending on liquid center and the remedy could be lower casting speed, lower casting speed. For example, if you take center line cracks, center line cracks. The cause of center line cracks for example, in slabs, bulging of white face at the liquid crater tip. In billets, rapid cooling of center region below the liquid pool that could be the causes as I have said. Now, about the factors that affect the casting speed could be one of the factor. Casting speed, caster length,
spray water intensity, secondary cooling, all these factors they may affect the center line cracks. So, the remedy could be you have to adjust secondary cooling, we have to regap the rolls. So, these are some uh, causes and factors and the remedy for some crack. However, there are so many type of internal cracks that one can see in the literature and one can update those things. These are the some few examples that I have given. Now, similarly, I give you a few examples for surface cracks, surface cracks, the types and remedies. Say types, take for example, longitudinal, longitudinal mid face cracks, mid face crack cause can be tensile strain generated in the mold and upper spray zone and upper spray zone is greater than strained shell strength, strained shell strength. That means, when the tensile strain generated in the mold and upper spray zone, when it greater than the strained shell strength naturally a surface crack will form. Now, the factors that influence, they cannot, if there could be multiple factors. For example, the steel composition could be one factor, the steel composition could be one factor, mold condition, mold condition, improper cooling, loss of taper, irregular mold oscillation, they all could be the uh, factors that can influence the mold condition and hence the longitudinal mid face crack or poor alignment, poor, poor alignment between mold and some mold support and some mold support. Increasing casting speed, increasing casting speed. These are say, some of the reasons or some of the factors that can influence the formation of the longitudinal mill crack. Of course, there could be other which one has to analyze. Now, the remedy. Remedy could be the reconditioned mold surface, recondition mold surface and adjust mold condition to ensure uniform cooling, reduce cooling in the upper spray zone, because just after the mold secondary cooling is done. So, to adjust the cooling over there, change mold powder also if possible or the check shrouding system also. Now, if you take another example say star cracks, this is the type star cracks, the causes excessive cooling, excessive cooling and frequent and frequent overcooling and reheating. It can also be due to hot shortness, hot shortness 
due to copper abrasion in the mold. The copper has a melting point 1078 degree Celsius. Factors that influence alignment of alignment of mold and foot rolls and secondary cooling. Secondary cooling. Remedy one can do for example, check mold walls with now plate, say plating of mold wall with chromium could be one of the remedy. Another check machine alignment, check machine alignment. Now, if you see still one more type of crack, for example, type if I take say transverse, transverse mid face and corner cracks, mid face and corner cracks, the cause or causes intensive cooling intensive cooling, frequent local overcooling, straightening of the strand within unfavorable temperature range between 700 to 900 degrees Celsius can all cause the formation of the above type of crack. Now, the factors which can influence a steel composition, one has to check the steel composition with, re with reference to aluminum, vanadium, niobium and manganese greater than 1 percent, they are highly susceptible to these cracks. Remedy, you have to check the spray water flux to ensure minimum cooling or reheating cycle and you have to maintain the surface temperature at least above 900 degrees Celsius. So, what I have shown? These are the some types of surface cracks or internal cracks and their remedies. There are more type of surface cracks or internal cracks. You can consult the references which I will be giving you at the end of uh, these lectures and you can update yourself. Now, we have seen the defects in the modern continuous casting plant so many developments have taken place for improving the quality of the continuous sleep cast product. Now, let us take it now, say development in the continuous casting, developments in continuous casting. Now, the first development that took place is in the uses of Tundish in the uses of Tundish, because in the original installation of continuous casting machine, Tundish was considered to be a source of supply of molten steel to the mold. That means, it was considered to be a transferring vessel between ladle and Tundish. With the modern or in the modern continuous casting machine, Tundish is no longer a, a transfer vessel, but it can perform several functions. So, I am listing the functions which a Tundish plays in a modern continuous caster. The first function is it acts as a reservoir. It acts as a reservoir and in order that this function is being fulfilled during the continuous casting and optimum capacity of the Tundish is desirable. Now, why this optimum capacity is desirable? Because nowadays, there is a concept of sequence casting. It is once 
ladle is emptied, continuous casting is not stopped, the next ladle is brought above the tandis. So, the time that is taken place between replacing one ladle and bringing another ladle, in that period, tandish supplies the molten steel to the mold. So, that is called sequence casting and three sequences or four sequences depending on that during the idle period when there is no ladle on the top of the tandish, then the mold gets molten steel from the tandish. So, in that connection, the tandish capacity is very important and tandish capacity should be designed such that between the idle period, the sufficient amount of steel is in the tandish, so that the continuous casting process goes on. So, the sequence casting and ladle scheduling is important in developing the tandish capacity. Second, it also acts as a distributor, because in a multiple strain casting machine, you have four nozzle, tandish nozzle, six tandish nozzle. So, a tandish, it distributes the molten steel in all these strands. Important is that superheat in each strain should be same, chemical composition to the same. So, in its distribution role, strain similarity is important and when we have a strain similarity, then the, all these strains will be similar and quality problems will be less. Also, in this distribution, particularly for multi-strain continuous casting machine, the, the strain breakout chances should be minimized and that can be done when the tandish supplies steel of the same temperature and of the same chemical composition to all the molds. So, that is the function of the distributor. Third, it feeds steel at a constant flow rate. For that purpose, constant head of molten steel is needed in the tandish. Fourth, which has been explored in recent years, that is the inclusion removal, that is the inclusion removal and this acts to cleanliness of steel, this aids to cleanliness of steel and as a result you have reduced clogging of the submerged entry nozzle for feeding molten steel from tundish to mold. So, you see now the tandish in the original installation of continuous casting machine was simply considered to be a transfer vessel. In the modern continuous casting machine, in addition to its function of transfer vessel, it performs several functions. Now, the idea of performing of several function is has come from a very, very simple reasoning, which is as follows. Now, you imagine a tandish capacity of 30 tons and if the casting rate is let us say 4 tons per minute, then very simple if I divide 30 tons by 4 tons per minute, then 7.5 minutes that come, it is the residence time available to me in the tandish of the liquid steel. That means, on average, the steel spends 7.5 minutes in the tandish before steel exits the tandish. So, the availability of 7 and half minute is the key concept in exploring the various functions of the tandish and to extend the tandish to contribute for better quality of the steel. So, that is what the objective behind this. Now, in order to fulfill this objective, it is at most required that during the continuous casting process, the flow pattern 
or the flow of liquid steel in the tundish should be modified such that all these functions can be fulfilled to our expectations. For example, the intrusion removal, it requires the flow pattern in the tundish to be very slow. So, you require time to give time to float out the inclusions. If you want to carry out some mixing, then you require a tundish flow pattern or the liquid steel in which it flows from the entry to the exit should have high velocity. So, these differential requirements, they led to the modification of existing conditions and this aspect we will discuss in the next lecture.